Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Bookmap uh, Pro Trader webinar series here for Tuesday. Today we have Fausto Pugliese. We've had him several times in the past. Uh, excellent stock trader. Um, I've seen him trade. Uh, he has a wealth of information uh, trading. Uh, saw you trade live uh, at your um, event uh, on site uh, in Long Island, uh, Fausto, which was fantastic. Uh, uh, anyway, um, so uh, yeah, he's going to go through uh, uh, some uh, uh, some examples and uh, and how he trades, etc. Uh, his his biography here, if you don't know who he is, um, one of the original uh, uh, day traders, so the the Sos bandits uh, back in the uh, early 1990s, uh, and um, acquired a wealth uh, from from his trading began, um, uh, you know, uh, working side by side with uh, uh, many very knowledgeable uh, traders um, and um, uh, just uh, built himself up here in the industry. Uh, and um, yeah, after spending considerable time mastering the art and discipline of day trading, Fausto chose to start his own company uh, and, and uh, share some of his uh, highly sought after wisdom here. Uh, so that's what he is doing. Uh, I have his contact information here. Uh, he has education and mentoring services. Uh, you can uh, go to the website. You have his Twitter. You have his YouTube, his uh, email here, uh, and then a Bookmap affiliate link. So if you're interested in Bookmap, there are some special deals you can get from uh, Fausto. Uh, I will post all of this into the chat so you have the links directly, and you can just click on them in the chat. Uh, therefore, you don't have to, like, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, write uh, and write this out and uh, uh, in the browser. Uh, so uh, let's go through the disclosures and then we'll uh, hand it over to Fausto. And good morning, everybody. Um, all right, general disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation demo paper trading mode and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investor. An investor, uh, could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so we'll turn it right over to Fausto and let him take it away. All right, well, thank you very much, Bruce. So let me get my screen shared up and running. Uh, give me a second here, everybody. Make sure I get the right screen. There we go. All right. Perfect. All right. So welcome, everybody. Let me just get a little chat back if everybody can hear me out loud and clear in the questions. Hope everybody can see the webcam too also. All right. Good. Good. Thanks a lot, Steve, everyone. All right. Good. So um, anyway, I'm going to talk about Bookmap and I'm going to tell you how I basically trade with the Bookmap platform and show you the tools, the bells, the whistles on it. It's a great platform. And, you know, there's a couple of good stocks that are actually making some good moves right now. I actually just missed this one right here as I was probably watching me moving my face on the right. But uh, we got a couple of good positions. Um, if there's this stock right here, I'm not down 10,000. It just got halted. I own at 1050. It just got halted at 11.30. I jumped in around 10.50. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, we got another stock that's moving, ALF, moving really nicely. OCGN is starting to back off right here. I might just get out of it. And we'll, we'll basically talk a little bit about all these things. Let me just I'll take a $200 loss. Always cut your losses and always run with your winners. And I'm going to, have to take a loss on this one, too. Let me just get out of it and run my winners. All right. So, anyway. I'm going to talk about how we use this platform, why we got in, why we're getting out of these positions, how they're getting halted, how to, you know, how to basically, uh, how I look at using the Bookmap platform and show you why you need to use it. But before I do that, I just want to do a little quick little intro and show you exactly why I'm here today, why you should listen, and most importantly, if you're not using Bookmap, why you should be move, using Bookmap. And if you are using it and you're not using it the way I'm using it, maybe you want to change your style a little bit more. So let me go out there and just bring up the PowerPoint really quick and just talk about how to spot the, uh, the false breakouts. Now, what I like to usually talk about as a false breakout 
there's these stocks that always make these big moves and you think they're going to pop and they're going to break, but they usually don't sometimes. And you want to make sure you don't get caught in those. And you want to make sure you know where to cut your losses so they, they, if things reverse on you. Now, just like uh, Bruce just mentioned you, uh, warning, you could lose all your money doing this. And I know a lot of people are trying different platforms out there, but please don't go out there and trade what you can't afford to lose. Um, a lot of people, you know, do this. They think they know what they're doing, but, you know, there's no guarantees when it comes to trading. So always remember that. Now, uh, just a little bit about myself. Um, you know, uh, Bruce just put up a couple of links up there. I love trading. I mean, I am a trading junkie. I've been doing this for 25 years. And, you know, I started, I found Bookmap. Um, it's almost like two years now, maybe long, almost three years. And I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Bookmap, and I don't want to sell anybody on it, but um, from doing this for 25 years, people always approach me and try to sell me some indicator. Fausto, we know that you're a big trader, a day trader. Um, could you use our platform? Could you use our hours? Could you just indicate it? And I'm like, I, I have really no interest because everything out there is not the style that I was trained or what I was actually preached here as a professional trader. I live here in New York the financial capital of the world. And, but when Bookmap came to me and they showed me the tools, first of all, I was overwhelmed. I looked at it, I'm like, uh-oh, it's another indicator. But it's not, it's a platform. And I'm telling you, I cannot trade without it. It literally took me from something that I usually call a level three, which I kind of promote calling Bookmap as a level four platform. Now I know, and the reason why is we all know what level one versions are, which is the bid and offer, level two, which every brokerage firm gives you for free. And then obviously, you know, you're going to do this, you're going to do it right. Now, a little bit about CTU. Like I said, I started this about since 1995. I am one of the original day trading schools, actually one of the original schools in the industry, and I'm still around, which people like looking at me like, wow, what do what you, you do so differently? How did you stick around so long? Because you got to know how to play the game. What, what I'm going to show you on the book map platform is that I – was trained to trade with other traders and and i'm going to invite every single one of you to come in my trading room and you'll see this live and you'll specifically see how we exclusively use the book map platform because we trade around it we want to know where the orders are we don't know where the buyers are but to just have a platform i'm just going to tell you it's not always going to be the most successful way of trading you have to surround yourself with a good team a good bunch of good traders that you have to trade with and if you don't get it with those traders, you better off going somewhere else. Listen, we all had jobs in our lives, right? And maybe you made a career in a certain industry, right? And you know, and you go get a job. Says, oh, I got a job finally to be, you know, uh, you know, a, a contractor, a, a, you know, in construction. Well, maybe that contractor is not the right fit for you. You know what I mean? Like anything. Maybe you're an engineer, and you went in a job as an engineer. And you're like, oh, I finally got the job after graduating, and you're like, you know what? I love it, but I just don't like the people there. They're not really that good. They're not very successful. I don't see I'm going to grow with them, but I love the industry. Trading's the same thing. So it's very important when you, what you're doing right now is more of an interview. You're interviewing your traders. You're seeing what it is. But just because you're using the book map doesn't mean it's going to make you successful. You got to have people that are good at it and use it every day. Now, just to get to know a little bit about everybody here, so I know where I'm going to be going with this. Can everyone just give me an idea and just tell me, um, have you been doing this for three months, six months, 12 months, new to it? Just give me in, in the questions. Just want to get to know how um, well known are you guys in Bookmap so I know exactly how advanced I should get versus how you know, beginnerish I should get. Remember, being a good trader is being a good listener. <laughs> I always, always thought that. Been using them five years, Tom. Wow, that's amazing. 12 months, Mungro, okay. One year and one month of books, several years. Okay, David. One month, one to three months. Okay. Steven, you're new to this. Just started Amber. Okay. Six months. All right. And my next question is this. Um, are you a day trader? Are you a, well, a stock trader? Because um, you could day trade futures. Are you futures? Are you crypto? Which one are you? John, you do futures? Futures? Futures day trading? Okay. A lot of stocks, options. Okay. Now, just give you my little take on the different industries. If you're trading a certain industry and you're not making money within 
maximum three months, you might want to change a different market or maybe find a different instructor. I always tell everybody that. So as, as much as you could trade on the bookmap platform and it might be good, you might want to just try a different market. And I'm not trying to knock different markets. I'm not saying, you know, we're the best, the stock markets, the best blows away options, whatever. Listen, it just might not be for you. So just give you guys a little heads up on that. Don't try to force something and do something if it really is not working for you. It's okay to try something else. You could use the book map to trade different markets. Okay, so now let's begin. For some of you beginners, I don't need to tell you a little bit about this for you advanced traders, but I always like to get a little beginnerish because I don't want to lose anybody, you know, uh, when we start getting a little bit more active in the stock. Now, um, I usually have my layout set up this way. Um, Bruce told me a really cool feature on customizing these bowls where I'm not, you know, I get to see the bulls as in, you know, the bull, uh, red means that they're sells, green means that they're, they're buys, reds are transactions on the bid, green are transactions on the offer. And you, obviously you got the, all the, these bar, these little, the heat map right here, which basically is telling you how long those big block orders have been out there. Now I, you know, they say things a little bit different than what I say. It okay, we all know about iceberg orders. Now they interpret iceberg orders on on Bookmap different than I do. Um, I came up with that word when I watched the movie The Titanic 20 years ago. An iceberg order that what I call is a big, massive block order, a big, big order. Now on the right hand side, you got the COB, which stands for the current order book. That is telling you. To me, that's my level three, okay? Book mapped on the left, the heat map is a level four. That's telling you the orders that are out there right now, okay? And uh, the heat map is more or less telling you how long they've been out there for. And then obviously on the right-hand side, you got the CV, uh, the CVP, which shows the volume uh, per price action chart shown. So it kind of tells you, you know, more of a, another part of the heat map are there, were, you know, were, were the buyers out there and how, how it's almost, almost like a volume indicator. So it kind of gives me more of a volume uh, description to see what, what is more of the trend. Is it more buying and selling? Obviously, you can see the stock is going up and you're getting a lot of those greens right there. And that's basically how I kind of use that. All right. So those basically the features I use just to give you guys a heads up. I know there's a lot more functionality on it, but I kind of keep things a little more simple. I don't want to think too much on this platform. So I kind of like just more or less just keep it exactly how you see it. Now, how do I use it? Okay, well, first of all, I want to talk about something we traded la uh, yesterday. We'll talk about Riot. Now, if you follow me on Twitter, if you follow me, I, by the way, I, I'm live on YouTube every morning at, at 9 a.m. and at 2.30, and we broadcast you know live. So if you don't come join my trading room, you know, you can go out there and friend us, like us, and then we post all our watch lists. So I want to talk about the Riot stock that we traded yesterday. And by the way, we'll, we'll get into some of the stocks that we traded. Um, just really quick, I just got to keep an eye on the stock that I'm in. So I'll make sure that nothing happens. All right. Uh, all right, just really quick, I'm just going to do, I'm just going to show you something because I got some profits in here and I don't want to get, I don't want to get in trouble. So, you know, getting out of my profits. So I'm watching um, the two positions that I'm in right now is the ALF, which is right here. And you could see how the stock um, basically got halted. And did it get halted again? No, not yet. It's, uh, it's starting to go down. So I'm just going to get out and take my loss. All right. And I'm in the ALF trade right here. The ALF got halted. So this stock had a nice push. I had a nice profit, but unfortunately, I'm trying to talk to you guys. So I just cost myself, oh, about, about $900. <laughs> but I got this one position ALF open right now. It's doing really, really well. It's breaking all-time highs. Um, you can see how the stock is kind of halted right here on book map right here. So as of right now, I don't know where the orders are. We have to wait until it opens up. So I'm going to keep an eye on it over here on the left-hand side. And we're going to watch it very closely. All right. So I got that one position. So to be a very successful trader, you got to have a game plan. Okay. What is the trend? Where are the strongest price levels? That's exactly what we do when it comes to trading. The trend and the price levels. Don't make things more complicated than what it is. You don't have to. All right. So 
what we're looking at is we're going to look at the stock right here, Riot. Okay, is what we traded yesterday. What is the trend in pre-market? Now, I don't know about you guys, but we do a lot of pre-market trading. Okay, pre-market is I kind of call the VIP access that, believe it or not, there's a lot of people don't know they have access to, to pre-market. Brokerage firms don't want to give them access. Not, you know, not because they don't want to, because honestly, a lot of people really don't qualify. But the big thing about pre-market is that we can see those orders, you know, coming in. We can see those orders, uh, you know, that were came in from the night before and seeing where people are positioning themselves. So it kind of gives us a, se a sense of trend where it is. Now, Riot, you could see that there were, here's the heat map. And I think uh, David was asking me, can you explain where you are seeing the heat map? Right here, all these red lines are my, uh, are the, are, is the heat of the predominant big block orders. Like here you have the trend. So the trend is up. Just, I know it's a stupid question. I'm just going to throw it out there. But which price levels show the most volume on the COB? Okay. Now, the COB right there is on the right. Now, the first thing I'm looking at is, let me, do I got a pointer here? Hold on. Maybe this might help a little bit more so you guys can follow along if I see my little dot. So I'm seeing these big price actions right here. And I want to see those orders, you know, that were out there. And you could see that they got filled. See how the order disappeared? By the way, you know what? I don't want to bounce around here. And I don't want to throw anybody off. But that stock just opened up. And uh, it's starting to trend down really quick right here. I'm looking over here on book map right here. Just showing you what we got going on. Here's our heat map. You got a 50,000 share buyer right here at 20, and you got a 69,000 share seller at 70, okay? So if I zoom in here, you could see a little bit more. You see that 20,000 share buyer? So it looks like the seller just got executed. So it looks like it's trying to go back up. You could see there's a 20,000 share seller out here at 80. You see this big red line down here? There's a 53,000 and a 27,000. That's your heat map right there. There's no one in between. So right now we're in, we're in the middle of a floor and ceiling. You see a lot of greens over here. The trend looks like it's trying to go up. Orders, we got this 680 right here. So probably gonna probably test it. Um, if I go over here, you can see the time in sales where it's trending. You see where the orders are, 50, 60, so on. Um, here on heat map, you could start seeing another 11,000 share buyer just came in here at 50. Now, the, the thing is, you don't want that guy to get executed. It's starting to build a support level. You see it's starting to build it up right there? Okay, that's a positive sign for the trend to go higher. It's this guy right here we got to be focused on. We got to get through this guy right here. Um, the longer the stock stays here, the more, the, the more, uh, the longer it stays here, the better it is. All right, so it doesn't look like it's going to break. It looks like it's going to trend down. I'm going to put this over here so you can see it over here on both sides. Oops, what did I do? There we go. So it looks like the seller looks like he left a little bit. You know what? I'm just going to sell and just take the money. I'll get out there. I'll just take out the 1100. All right, let's just get out there and take the 1100. All right, there we go. It, start, it looks like she's starting to trend down. The guy left, and what that basically would tell me is maybe the guy started, he said, you know what, he pulled his order, and now he says, you know what, let me, let me start selling it. I'm trying to get out of it. No one's selling it. Nobody's, nobody's calling me. Nobody's knocking on my door. So what he basically did, he's basically what he did is hit the bid. You know, basically, like, he went out there and says, you know what, let me just sell it. So he could pull his order whenever he wants. And you could see right here, now we're down to that big buyer right here at 52,000. Um, right here. We got out at what price? We sold it at 45. So right now we're down 32. So we're looking a little bit better than we could have got out at 50, but I thought we were going to get a little bit of a push. Let's see if it's going to probably back off a little bit. But we'll talk about this strategy a little bit. We'll talk about some of the stocks, but I still want to just show you my style. Let me go to Riot, let me go to Riot really quick. So here you have that big seller get executed, right? Seller at 33. Resistance at 34, 
34, uh, 80 and 34, uh, 35 and then 36. These are your resistance levels right there. You see this guy right here up those that that orange line right there. Those are my that's my game plan. That's my next resistance levels. So now we change our we change our slide. Which price level shows the most buying? Well, you look here at 33.85, which is right around here. There's the biggest buyers right there. Okay, remember when you break through a resistance that resistance now becomes a new support level. There, right there, you could see where the orders are happening. You can see how that orders are getting filled. We're getting a very thick bar on the CVP. What do you think happens? Because history repeats itself. Well, right here. Riot breaks over 34, okay? Again, runs to 35. Big resistance levels right here. 58, not 59,000 shares. Now, remember, that guy's been out there since 930. You could see here down here at the bottom. Let me show you my point there. Right here. You could see it right there. There's your resistance levels. He's been out there. Big order. Okay. It's testing him. You can see that the, the CVP is starting to build a little bit more of a green. As the day goes on, boom, it took the guy out. It executed him. It went higher. Now it's going now from there it's going to test you know the next biggest seller. You could see there on the heat map there's another seller at what was it 63. Boom, takes that guy out at at 36, I'm sorry. Goes to the next resistance level, 37, takes him out. Next biggest seller, 3760, 3780. Just keeps taking him out. And then eventually that seller at 38, held it, held it, held it, and then finally, boom, the thing came right back down to 3560, tested the next biggest iceberg order there. Let's see what happened to Riot right now when it trends down. And let me bring it up for you. Here's Riot. So. When you look at that chart and you see the big resistance levels and we look at it more of a simple chart, it's all about having a game plan. Remember, resistance levels are built by sellers. See, we don't teach support and resistance levels. I, honestly, I tell everybody, there's actually no such thing of support and resistance levels. Everybody's like, wait a minute, is that the whole philosophy? No, because you cannot have a support and resistance levels unless there's a buyer and seller out there. Supports and resistance levels are built by buyers and sellers. So that's why like when I see people teach indicators and this and that, I'm like, oh, that's great. You got a great indicator. But are you trying to predict the past? What happened in the past? Or you want to predict the future? Because it's the future that we're looking at to know how to have a game plan. And having a game plan is to know where those orders are. And you could see right here, if you didn't have that game plan and you didn't know where those resistance levels were, you would probably you would have probably blew up your account. Because as much as we saw those buyers getting done, which is a sign of of of, of demand, boom, thing goes all the way up, takes that guy out. But eventually the guy never left. He kept refreshing his order, updating his order. And you know what? You had a really nice run from 34 to 36. Hell of a nice profit in about within two, three hours. But if you didn't see him still refreshing his order, boom, there you go. You just blew up your account. So let's look at ENOB, another one. The trend of the stock in pre-market is up. This is a stock that we traded yesterday. Really nice stock, ENOB. Now, which price levels show you the most, volu uh, the most volume on the COB? So anyway, when you look at COB, you have support levels at 11, okay, then at 10. That's what I see on the COB. Now, remember, certain stocks will have more bigger block orders or bigger iceberg orders, that I call, um, at certain price levels. But the big one resistance levels, which is not a lot, which is at 1250. And you can see that there it's 5,000. Now, notice the volume fill right here 
at 1080 and 1090. From there, you could see how the stock pulled back at 10 at 1090 holds, not because of you know some chart said so, is because you could see right here. Oops, sorry about that. That there was a big heat right there, and that means that order was out there was being built by this hundred and five thousand share buyer. Now you think about that for a second. That's not like how many shares are you trading? A hundred, three hundred, maybe a thousand. But it's that guy right there that made that support level get built. And you could have seen it at 940. You could have jumped in, pay a little bit more, maybe at 945, and rode the thing all the way up, which by the way, where that resistance level, where you can see that guy's been out there since a little past 930 at $13. Now, change the slide here. What will happen if ENOB can't break above 1250? Well, very simple. It just goes down. And not only that, but you could see that the sellers that got executed where that green arrow was and how people started filling orders says, you know what? Now you have something that's called program trading. All these orders come down. And if you didn't get out, okay, where you saw that other iceberg order, now you're at $9. Now what do you do? Now what do you do? Become an investor? Oh, I can't take a loss like that. Listen, it's all about following the money. You don't follow the money, you're going to get yourself hurt. So the big thing is you got to learn before you can earn. And now what I want to do is I want to go to the I want to go to the platform and you know and I want you guys to contribute and tell me what are you looking at and let me tell you how I see it. That's the big thing. So a couple of things I want to bring up um, by the way, good thing I sold that OCGN. That thing just came crashing down. <laughs> just want to bring this up and show you. This stock had a really, really nice run this morning, and we just got out of it. And thank God we did because whew, it just went from seven all the way down to six sixty. So OCGN, let me bring this up really quick for you. Let me kind of show you what we got going on over here. So here you have OCGN. You could see how OCGN um, gapped up pretty nicely, but had a nice little push. But there was one issue here. If you notice up here, once we got right around the 729, 735, 740, look at all the look at the heat map, how which has grown. Look at all those orders. And most importantly, look at the guy out there at 750. I mean, he's been out there, he put his order two minutes after the um, market opened up and then all of a sudden, I mean, you didn't see anybody here up until 945, right? And then all of a sudden, right past about 10 o'clock, then these guys start popping their noses right here. You see that right there? What is that? 100,000, 134,000, uh, 89,000, and then a whopping 217,000. This is what my mentor always taught me. Do you really want to trade against that guy? Because it can go through it. That can happen. But do you really want to trade against him? You know what I mean? Do you really, really think that you're smarter than him? You know what I mean? That's the way you have to look at it. Now, let's look at this stock right here. Now, I, I, now that we're watching it, um, by the way, would anybody trade this stock? Yes or no? Just out of curiosity. I'm sitting here talking. Let me ask a question. Would anybody here trade the stock? Good, good, yes. Why not? Listen, money's money, right? Do you care what the company does? Okay. Now, if you were going to trade this stock by looking at the book, mark, book map, um, where would you want to buy it? By the way, um, Alan, let me bring a good point to you because you said you'll trade the options on it. Um, Alan, let me, let me tell you something about options. You cannot be a good options trader if you can't be a good stock trader. Stock trading is black and white. It's very simple. And I know the whole story. People look at options. They're like, well, just the leverage. Please don't use that word because I know more people that blow up their accounts you know, by getting that stuck in their head. Your first um, thought of doing a trade is buying the stock. 
And then you could say, well, you know what? It's got a good option trade. Let me do an option on it. Because when you trade an option, um, remember, the spreads become very big. You know, you got time, commission, and spread to beat. The spreads become very large. The sometimes just trading the stock with a penny spread makes it easier. And by the time the option moves, the stock already moved already. So not to discourage a trade option, but learn to be a good stock trader first, and you'll be a phenomenal option trader. Okay? Now, um, let's look at this example right here. So where would have been a good price to buy the stock? To see where you guys could just look at this. Where would you think a good price would be? Okay, um, Amar says uh, right around 650. You know what? Let me go zoom in over there. Okay. All right. Let me tell you why you're wrong. Let me tell you why you're wrong. Biggest mistake traders make. Don't ever, 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 and you write this down. Buy and sell stocks that end in zeros and fives. Don't ever do that. Don't ever, ever do that. Because every amateur trader out there is going to say, oh, I'll buy it at $6. Oh, I'm going to sell it at 7 put an order at 7 Why 7 Why not $6.99 or $6.98? Because you could see right there that every amateur out there right now has got an order at six fifty. If you just went a penny above him, you cut the line by 155,000 shares, okay? So just give you a heads up. If you put an order now, you're going to be last on that list. That's the other thing I look at it. So once you want to cut the line by 155,000 shares that you know is support levels, that's a little strategy I was always taught. So always keep that in mind. So right, you said right now, uh, Garrett, you said 162, wherever it is. But yes, that's where it's about. But anyway, you can see the stock is you know trying to build some support levels right here. But the thing is this, I want to zoom out a little bit further, all right? So I want to go out and zoom out, and I want to see if there's anybody else out there. And you could see how the heat map really, really stands out. And you could see that if you get past 650, now let me tell you how I also use it. If you get past 650, and that buyer gets done, and by the way, that could happen, like it or not, the stock is going down to six, okay? So you can make a choice. You could sell it right now at 645. Well, let's say, let's, I'm just saying hypothetically it broke it. Would you want to hold it for another 45 cents and, th and hoping it's going to hold that six? Or would you just rather buy it back cheaper? One of the biggest things that we teach at Cybertrain University is we really never really, our main goal is not to teach people how to make money. We teach them how to stop losing it. That's everyone's biggest problem. Nobody likes to take losses. And they don't like people telling them what to do. And if your person doesn't like someone to tell you what to do, you should not be trading, okay? Um, constructive criticism is very valuable. I know once in a while, it's nice to get a pat on the back. Listen, I got three sons, married for, 20, you know, for 24 years. Uh, believe me, I know about how to be proactive, but I also know not to always be right. <laughs> if anyone's there married, you know what I'm talking about. Um, happy wife, happy life. You want to be a good trader? You got to have great mentors. You got to have someone that's going to tell you, don't do that. And if someone looks at it, that's why I want a trading room. And, and I say, well, listen, why are you st we're all out of position. Why are you holding it? Well, I can't afford the loss. Well, could you afford a, a loss that goes down another 50 cents or another dollar or another three dollars? You know, so you got to always remember that. Now, um, by the way, is there any stocks anyone's trading right now? Just out of curiosity. Anybody here in a position? Anybody here in any position? CCLV? Let's look, let's look at that one because you're the fastest one that brought it up there. CCIV. Okay. So CCIV. Uh, Garrett, right? That your name? Okay, Garrett. So Garrett, what's your game plan? By the way, first thing I want to ask you a dumb question. Where do you own it at? It's not really a dumb question. It's a good question. Where do you own it at, Garrett? $17. Okay, good. So. You own the stock at 17. Where did you buy it back here? And when, when did you buy it? Back in January. Okay, you bought it all the way here. So, okay. So you bought this stock in January, okay? And you didn't sell it at 60? Is, 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 that, is my eyes reading this correctly? 
you bought this stock at 17, the stock went all the way to $60 and you didn't get out of it. You didn't sell it at 65. So you, you held that stock all the way up and then rode the thing down back to 17. Okay. <laughs> you know what? I'm glad you're laughing at yourself. Isn't that, that's what you have to do. Okay. You got it. You know what? Yeah. I was, I'm an idiot. I should have did that. I should have learned. I'm great. Okay. Now, unfortunately, the history on book map, if I bring it up here, okay, let me just X out of some of these here. Now, was that a day trade that turned into a swing trade that turned into an investment? <laughs> just, just out of curiosity. Uh, let me just bring that. CCIV. All right. Okay. CCIV. I'm going to bring it up. It's got to load some data. Uh, all right. Right now, we're just going back. Uh, we've got to go back further. I'm going to click this arrow. We're only looking at an hour. Look back uh, three hours of market. Okay. So, unfortunately, me looking at book map for you is really can't help me other than if I was going to day trade it right now. So you own it as a swing trade, okay? So I can't really help answer that question for you other than looking at it as a day trade. And you know, as I'm looking at it as a day trade, as the data is loading up right here, uh, just telling you how what my thoughts on it, you know, because it is a little concerning. You can see the stock has been going down, down, down from yesterday. By the way, if the stock is trending down and closes at the lows of the day, that's not a good sign. You should be getting out of it. And if you didn't get out of it at 24, now you, now you own it at 2280. This stock probably, in my opinion, looking at it, probably is going to test somewhere around 20 because now you're looking at long-term, not short-term. So you're at 20. Um, you're at 20, and when I'm looking at the data right here, you can see that there was a big iceberg order right here at 23. The guy got filled. That's not a good sign. So, that, you know, listen, 17, selling at 22, you got a profit. I don't think there's anything wrong with that because – You've been riding this thing down. You had a second wave at 27. You didn't get out of it. All right. So that, that's my thoughts on it because I do swing trade also. Okay. So that's my game on that. Next one. Anyone else got one? Uh, AMC is a little fast. Um, AMC is obviously breaking out. It's doing well. It's a fun stock to day trade. I don't know where you own it at, but um, as a day trade, it's doing pretty well. Uh, it's really kind of hard. Um, just to kind of give you guys a, a funny story. So I traded AMC. I want to tell you, show you something pretty cool here. Where is it? Where are you? Is it this one? Uh, no, that's not it. I, uh, we did a trade on AMC that we broadcast on our YouTube channel. And where is it? There was a 800,000 share seller at 20 bucks. And that was part of the beginning of that rally. That thing went up. Oh, here it is. Yeah, I got it. I found it. I look on Here it is. So this is how Bookmap really helped us out right here. I took this screenshot of AMC right here. 700,000 share seller, right? And you see that there's 16,000, 7,000, 700,000, okay? You can see how the stock ran. This was at the close, okay? Getting close to the close. Ran up, tested, backed right off. Um, I didn't get the second screenshot of that one, but that guy got done, okay? The guy got done, and that thing literally, and we know where it went. It went all the way to 60. So the, you obviously want to know about the short squeeze that's going on. The one thing that's nice about the book map is you get to see a lot of algorithms. I'm a high-frequency trader type of trader. I'm a, what's called a tape reader. I read the tape, and reading the tape is knowing, seeing where the orders are happening. But it's those big iceberg orders that kind of distinguished the trend. And when that guy got done, that thing took off. So let me look at another stock. We had a couple other people. You own it at 58. Okay, so you own it at, when did you buy it, by the way, Jerry? You own it at 58? Did I get, did I put AMC here? Yeah, it's in here. Let's just load it up. So AMC, zooming out, is what you gotta be, is what you gotta be aware of, okay? So you got this big seller right here at, at 64. The guy got done. Big iceberg order came here right around 63, but there's that 237,000 share seller at 64. 64 has known to be a very big resistance levels on that stock. Um, if I go back, 
You could see that there's another 194,000 share seller at 65. So you could see the stock is moving what's in, in dollar interview, into intervals, okay? That's basically 33, 34, 35, all right? Uh, if I can zoom out any further, you could see that you're not going to really get the big, big orders down the field. I mean, 75, 80, you know, but m predominantly you could see program trading kicking in right around those prices. So you've got to have a game plan, okay? Uh, all right. Now, anything else? Alan says the CRSR. Let's look at that one. CRSR. Okay. So CRSR, we traded the stock yesterday. The stock is pretty much done with. Um, you, had, you had some big iceberg orders hovering here around 36. It's, it's right around there. It's not looking good uh, for that stock. I don't know where you own it at, but I'll bring it up on the book map. And CRSR. Once again, you might not like me what I tell you. I'm just being very honest with you. Don't. Bruce could probably agree with me. Uh, uh, getting too much data here. All right, hold on. I got to X out some stuff. CSV. Which, all right. Looks like she's loading the data. Ooh. I'm getting an error. Reported successfully. Uh, Draft King was yellow stock that we were trading. All right, so what was that stock again? CRSR. Let's bring it up here. Okay, it's loading the data, historical data. Now, it's going to bring it up over here. So the thing, I'm just going to give you a heads up on this stock right here. Um, CRSR, just to let you know. One of the big things that we also teach here at Cyber University is something called the three T's, tradable, trend, and trap. And when you look at this CRST, the first T, it's really not that tradable. We call it, this stock's like more of a category five, which is the highest. If you look over here on tier sizes, see what's the size on the level two? You see it has a lot of hundreds. That means that the average trader in the stock is trading 100 share lots. So I don't know how many shares you're trading, but that's that's not a lot. That's not like an average stock like let's just say i'm choosing picking this one out of hat you can see it's like forty nine thousand, hundred thousand. you know uh the stock just got halted uh you, you can see like you know some of these stocks got bigger price levels so that's the reason why you got to be very careful when it comes to something like that uh, but i got the historical data it's already up there it's coming up and gotta go back a little bit further So when I look at it, I mean, I'm not really seeing a lot of support resistance levels. So it kind of makes it a lot more difficult when you're trading a stock like this. Just give you a heads up. So I would probably be very careful. But as a swing trader, I mean, you just broke through a major support levels. It's probably going to test. It's going to probably come down to 43. That's your next major support levels right around there. So you could, you could sell it now or you could wait until then. That's the way I look at it. Uh, you bought at 35 puts yesterday when it, when it was at 40. Okay. Well, you should have sold those puts. <laughs> All right. Any other stocks out there? Any other ones? I just want to bring some other stuff up here. Now, I just want to bring up another stock that we traded uh, this morning, which was uh, U UXIN. Okay. So, UXIN was a nice little moving stock. It gapped up really nice and went up to about 650. And just want to show you how I use the book map on this one. But you could see how the stock didn't have any buyers from right around $6. You had this big seller of 94,000 shares at six bucks, which by the way, I always told you, remember, don't sell at whole numbers. Stock literally never got there, hovered right just about less than 12 cents away, came trending down. If you notice down here, there was no buyers. No buyers all the way up until $5. And 
and just literally came down beautifully. So this stock would have been a great short. Now, in the game plan is five dollars next support level. So from eight from five eighty eight all the way down to five bucks have been great. But buyer got done, broke through that. More buyers showed up here at four four seventy four sixty. They all got filled. Okay, it all they hit them and it went right back down. Hit test the next support levels. Hit the buyer over here four forty. Took them out. Boom, went down. Now the next biggest buyer down here is right around here, around four bucks. You could see the volume bars started picking up a little bit, and that's why it probably started trending up from four dollars. And right now it's at four forty-seven. So, um, and it kind of just took this seller out right here around the four forty. So that's probably a positive sign. Might be doing a doing a a comeback, but as a trader, right between the four forty-seven and the four dollars. Remember, all these orders that got executed in the past are now out there. People own these shares, so these, these supports and resistance levels could still exist. Just because they're not out there now doesn't mean someone owns it. So they do become support and resistance levels, but as a trader, if I don't see them out there and I see it's trending up and I see it's starting to break through it, you know, you could get a little bit of comeback. That's how I kind of do with something that's called bottom fishing. You know, see a stock go from six down to four. That's a pretty substantial drop. That's a hell of a, a hell of a downtrend. But how do you know where you catch the bottom? By seeing where those orders are. Um, do you do futures? No, I don't do futures. Uh, Bruce be the perfect guy to ask. I know they got some great futures traders that they, they do use it towards it. I only use it towards stocks. And we are going to be start marketing because uh, we do use it towards cryptocurrencies. And we'll have a class on that too. We'll, we'll have one with Bruce with you guys uh, coming up on the next cycle of classes and we'll show you how we use the crypto. But I only use it for stock trading and day trading. Uh, any other questions? Uh, when you see a price move into the high liquidity our, uh, area, when are you uh, entering? Well, first of all, MR, I'm looking at the price action of the stock, okay? So I'm looking at the COB and I'm seeing the volume bars on the bottom, see if those orders get executed. Those guys start getting executed, you know, and start breaking through those big iceberg orders, I will buy back into the stock. I might even average up if I own it. Uh, can you see OTC stocks? Yes, you can, but certain ones. Not all of them, but you can. Okay. Any other questions? Listen, regarding about Alan, what you brought up, you, you have to understand that what is the biggest news out there it's not about covid anymore the covid stocks are finished okay cryptos news still out there we have the blockchains like the riots like we traded yesterday uh but you know you, the big news you got to keep an eye on which we all know about is the reddit stocks the wall street bet stocks the amcs the KOSSs. you know uh what was the other one i traded the other day that moved up there. There was the L, the L O V the L it was the L O V uh, L O V O something like that. I think it was. It's a bunch of them out there. They, 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 uh, yeah. Oh, the C L O V. That was the other one that we did well on. Um, there's a. I have my spin on it, and I know we have some people that trade options, but I think someone found a way how to manipulate the option market towards the stock market by by getting these people with the short squeezes. And I, I do I do teach that in my class. I do I will talk about it in my class. So if you guys want to come and join us, you're more than welcome to it. But um, and get the video on it. When I'll give you guys a way how to register. Just send me an email. But there's a way how you know options market. Someone found a way how to follow the option market and follow the shorts, and it's making these stocks run. Um, it's a little bit of a, a long process of telling you, but it kind of all started when they got rid of the uh naked shorts so if you ever heard of what a naked short is look that up and you'll see what, I'm, what i meant by that but there's great opportunities out there but you got to be careful i know some of you said you point out the amcs and the, and the game stops i know a lot of people have them and i know they're doing great but remember you did not make anything until you sell it always remember that all right so um i want to finish up and let everybody know about how to kind of register and kind of see us use this stuff live in our markets uh, just so you don't know, I don't know if you guys know this, but we're endorsed by every brokerage firm in the industry. 
uh, were featured on, you know, Trade Station, Metastock. Um, I've been on Charles Schwab, NASDAQ. Um, actually, there's a video that I did on, uh, that was on our website. NASDAQ has me a regular guest. I call their platform the level three platform. You're now using Bookmap level four. Uh, NASDAQ wants you to know how to trade the markets. They want you to know how it works. You've got to see it on the exchange. Why not utilize it? So there's a reason why they have me on there because they know what I do. And believe me, I get scrutinized all the time. I love what I do. I know how to trade, but you got to know how to play the game. So I want to invite every single one of you to come to my cyber group room. Uh, this is like the original trading room that I started uh, about 25, over 23 years ago. I want you to come and see us use the bookmap platform. I want you to see the stocks that we trade, how we have a game plan, how we get in and out of it, um, you know, how our traders do well on it. You know, it's, uh, there's only two platforms we use, the execution system and the bookmap platform. That's all we need. So we have events that go on all day. We start around 7.30 in the morning. We do a lot of pre-market pre trading. We do a live audio broadcast live on YouTube. And in our trading room at 9 a.m., we start doing auto commentary right around 9.30 to about 10.30. We do a, a live traders talk meeting workshop every Tuesday at 11 o'clock. We have an afternoon meeting, starts at 2.30, and audio commentary in the afternoon. So no matter what part of the country you're from, if you're watching this as a recording or if you're basically you're here live, you know, there's always an opportunity at any time of the day to come in. Listen, I was off yesterday. I was at a wedding. I flew in yesterday from, from North Carolina. I wake up in the morning, I'm in cash, I start fresh, I make what I make, I, whatever it is. Every day is a new, a new day. I missed a lot of great winners yesterday, but listen, there's always, you, you, you're not gonna lose your job. <laughs> Stock market's not going out of business, it'll always be there. So this is what I'm kind of asking everybody uh, regarding about a promotion. Um, all we ask is to pay for an application fee of $9 to get into the room. Uh, we do that because we don't know who you are, where you came from, or what your what your goal is. We have a, a, a questionnaire we ask you. Um, everybody here is going to have access to talk to an education advisor by paying the $9. You're going to have access to our book map uh, tutorials that we came up with. Uh, there's a lot of content. We do that because, like I said, we don't need, to, I don't need the $9. The $9 just tells us that you're a real person and we know exactly who you are, and also, what I end up doing is if you do register, I will basically give you a free coaching class uh, because at the end of the day, I'm gonna need to interview you because I'm looking for traders I could trade with. I mean, this is basically what it comes down to it. People always ask me, you know, where you make your money, is it teaching or trading? I'm like, I, I don't know, I can't ask for everybody else, but you know what, trading's a lot of work, I gotta pay my staff, but I'm really looking for people I could train that I can make money with. So if you feel like you're that person and you like the bookmap platform, you see how we're using it. Here's your opportunity to jump in it. And let me just tell you right now, and I told Bruce this just before we started, we are heavily, heavily, heavily invested in Bookmap. Um, we're going to start teaching it on Thinkorswim. We're going to start, um, I'm already in the process of working with Tastyworks to get it on their platform. Um, I, got, I got this platform on TradeStation, okay? Where do you think they all started? I did it because I have very big connections with them. So here's your opportunity to be part of our, 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 our crew, and you're going to see it by us knowing how it works, by me getting you VIP access into it. The only people who get that are people part of my team. So if you want to be part of the team, make the investment. Let's see if it's for you, and we'll go from there. Uh, do you look at the dark pools? Alan, you can't look at dark pools on, on Bookmap. Dark pools, you know, listen, um, I teach dark pools. Uh, I was a dark pool trader when I was a broker, but... Your biggest concern is the high frequency trades and the algorithms. That's really what you should be concerned about. That's really where most of the volume is. You're not going to see dark pools on a book map. You're going to see it on some, you know, a, I'll give you a quick break, breakdown of dark pools. A dark pool is when a broker trades, does a swap with another trader in his company, um, and then they cross the trade, and then, and then you'll see the order later. I don't know, you know, I don't think that really is going to change anything. Someone's just trying to get a big order filled. Everyone has a little spin on it, but you really want to know is where are these orders being placed? That's what you really want to learn. Um, regarding uh, getting registered for that, for everyone to hear, all you have to do is, uh, let me just go to my website and bring it up. I'll show you that video, by the way. Abbreviation, CTU.co. And, uh, 
here's that video right here that you guys want to watch. Uh, I was on the NASDAQ. I've been a regular guest there. I talk about the NASDAQ total view, but let me tell you, when you watch this, you're basically looking and you're seeing the, um, on the book map, you're seeing the COB. That's basically what that is. So that's basically what book, but, but you're getting more data. There's just one book. That's only one ECN. There's about several ECNs. But if you want to sign up um, for the trial, uh, where are we? It's down here at the bottom. Here we go. It's right here in the bottom, and I'll just put that link for you guys here, and you guys could just feel free to register for it. There you go. All right, any other questions before we go? Wow, it's already 11 o'clock. Time flies. <laughs> any other questions, uh, fellow traders? All right, so with that said, listen, uh, Bruce, thanks for having me here. I love talking to your audience. It's been great. And I look forward to teaching all of you guys. Listen, trading's a great job. You got a great platform. It works great. You got to know how to utilize it. And, you know, we use it all the time. I'm not, you know, listen, I love it. I swear by it. I really can't trade without it. And I'm not trying to, you know, butter, butter up book map and stuff, but it is a good, good platform. I've seen many of them out there, but you got to know how to use it properly. It will save you thousands and it will make you hundreds of thousands. So you just got to use it properly. Remember, the people who we're competing against are the freebies. The people want everything for free. Okay. And you know, and I know there's nothing free in this world. You tell me you could be rich working with free people. I don't think that's going to happen. You get what you pay for. So use it right. Surround yourself that people use it right. And then you can do this for the rest of your life. And that's the main goal. Thank you very much, Palma. I really appreciate it. Thank you. For, uh, thank you for, uh, for the comments. And uh, thanks, Bruce, for having me. And I uh, look forward to seeing you all. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day and be safe.